Pesticide labels are unique when you look at the universe of chemical products available. If a particular chemical meets the criteria of a pesticide, the product label must meet the standard established by US EPA or it is considered to be misbranded. It is important that an applicator reads all the provisions on a label because they provide information on the safe, effective use of a pesticide. It is considered to be a legal document that must be followed. If label directions are not followed, then the result may be an adverse effect to humans or the environment, and in addition to enforcement action, an applicator or company may face legal liability. All the information an applicator needs to apply a pesticide safely is included on the label, with very few exceptions. For example, certain types of restricted use pesticides will require an applicator to go to a company webpage and view additional information that becomes part of a pesticide label by reference. Some labels include endangered species considerations, and will require an applicator to visit the EPA ES webpage to see if there are additional use instructions. So what kind of information can be found on a label? There are at least 12 elements required by EPA. These include brand name, active ingredient statement, a net content statement, EPA registration number, EPA establishment number, signal word, child hazard statement, and statement of practical treatment. Although all these label provisions are important, cultivators need to make sure the active ingredient is on the approved pesticide list. By knowing the difference between the three signal words on a pesticide label, we can make choices based on product toxicity or hazard. The three signal words are danger slash poison, the most toxic or hazardous, warning, a pesticide product of moderate toxicity, and caution, indicating that a product is considered to be low in toxicity. In addition to the elements listed in the previous slide, the label must contain directions for use for the particular site where the applicator intends to use the pesticide, a WPS reference statement or agricultural use box if the pesticide will be used in a farm, forest, nursery, or greenhouse situation. Also, the label must include a precautionary statement, storage and disposal instructions, and a restricted use box if the pesticide is classified as an RUP by EPA. Of these elements, Directions for use and intended site of use must be on the pesticide label. If any of these items are missing from the label, the product is considered to be misbranded. The first label we will look at has a couple of problems. This particular label contains an active ingredient which is not on the Nevada approved list. In addition to this, the product label states that it is only for outdoor home use. It cannot be used in an indoor commercial facility. Pesticide labels either have instructions for home and residential uses or commercial use with few exceptions. Most general use products that can be found in nurseries, home improvement stores, and other retail establishments are home use products. Again, fit for 25B exempted pesticides do not need to meet this criteria to be used legally in an indoor grow facility. As mentioned in the previous slide, this product is an exception to the residential versus commercial use provision on the pesticide label. This company's label was approved by EPA but did not include any label language which stated it was for commercial or residential use. Since it includes an active ingredient on the Nevada list, it can be used legally at the present time. 
This label may be changed in the future, however. This product label indicates that it includes an active ingredient on the pesticide list. Many growers select a pesticide product based on a recommendation or if they see a pest listed on the label they are trying to control. Although this product is known to control aphids, it cannot be used in a Nevada grow facility because the label states not for use in greenhouses. So selection of this particular product would be a mistake. Since we know the active ingredient is effective against aphids, the correct strategy would be to look for a product that contains this active ingredient and can be used in a commercial greenhouse. If the active ingredient appears on the Nevada list, it means that there is at least one, and in many instances more than one, product available that contains this active ingredient and meets all the criteria established by Nevada. If aphids are the pests you are concerned with, there are multiple active ingredients which will control this pest. This particular active ingredient is on the Nevada list and meets all the criteria established by Nevada. Keep in mind that this active ingredient appears in yellow on the Nevada list because it is a systemic product which will be absorbed by the plant and residue will remain in the plant tissue for a long period of time, especially in an indoor setting. Therefore, always use the lowest application rate specified on the pesticide label and use the product early in the growth cycle. This is page two from the same label. It is hard to read, but to control aphids in three and a half to five inch containers, the lowest rate specified is one gram per pot. There are usually other restrictions and prohibitions listed throughout a pesticide label. Note on the bottom of this label, there is an indication that the product will not control adult fungus gnats. So again, it is important that you read the entire pesticide label prior to using this product. For any active ingredient on the approved Nevada list, there is usually more than one product which meets the legal criteria. This particular product contains the same active ingredient emitted cloprid as in the previous slide and does have a section on the label which gives the proper use rates for greenhouse plants. In the greenhouse section of the label, only one rate is given, 0.5 fluid ounces per 1,000 plants. It also states that seedlings must not be treated more than seven days prior to transplanting to assure effectiveness of the chemical treatment. Safe Scythe is effective against mites. If we were to only look for the pest on the label, we would like to control before we select a product and not check for an active ingredient on the Nevada pesticide list, we might select this product. Unfortunately, petroleum oil is not on the Nevada list and cannot be used in commercial greenhouse situations based on the pesticide label. This is another product which uses the same brand name and the same active ingredient. Note that the WPS reference statement or agricultural use box is not present anywhere on the label, which would indicate it is not for commercial use, even though it states it can be used in greenhouses. Reading the label would reveal that it can only be used in home greenhouses. If mites are the pest we are concerned with, then this product might be considered. 
it contains a different active ingredient than the product in the previous slide that is effective against mites. It contains an active ingredient on the Nevada list and can be used in a commercial greenhouse facility. For the control of thrip, this product contains an active ingredient on the Nevada list, spinosad, and has both agricultural and non-agricultural uses listed on the same label. The agricultural use requirements would apply for commercial greenhouse use. Note that the re-entry interval is four hours for this product and that applicators must use coveralls, chemical resistant gloves, shoes, and socks when applying this material. At first glance, this particular product appears to meet the Nevada requirements and is a chemical of choice for many cultivators. Even though it contains an active ingredient on the Nevada pesticide list, further review of the label reveals that it does not have a greenhouse label. The company does make a commercial greenhouse version of this product, which has been approved by EPA. However, most cultivators have an easier time locating the product than the commercial greenhouse version. It may seem like a small difference, but it is important in that the site must be on the pesticide label for the pesticide to be used legally under federal law. In addition, the product label specifically states not for commercial use. By the way, because the product states for organic production, it doesn't always mean that there is no risk to the user or the consumer. Products with organic claims must comply with USDA specifications. Any pesticide can result in an adverse effect if it is misused. The hazard or risk of becoming sick from exposure is a combination of two factors, the toxicity of the product and the dosage received. If a user is exposed to a high enough dosage or amount of an organic product low in toxicity, then adverse effects could still occur. Exposure can occur through oral, dermal, and or respiratory routes of entry into the body. This is another product which contains the same active ingredient, includes the correct use site, and has commercial pesticide use instructions as evidenced by the agricultural use box, which addresses the WPS requirements. This product meets Nevada specifications. This product contains an active ingredient which can't be found on the approved Nevada pesticide list. It conspicuously is missing many of the instructions which are typically found on other pesticide products, which also contains this active ingredient and is available for insect control. Since this product does not make pesticidal claims and it is being advertised as a leaf polish, it is not being regulated as a pesticide at the present time. This may change because it is currently being used to control pests and US EPA may consider the product a pesticide and require it to be registered and labeled as such. For now, it is legal to use this product until EPA decides to change its status. EPA has registered a few pesticide products which can be used on industrial hemp. This particular product is a registered pesticide as evidenced by the EPA registration number at the bottom of the label. Note only does this product specify that it can be used on industrial hemp, 
but it can be used indoors and outdoors. Note also that this product is considered to be a plant growth regulator or PGR. PGRs are not approved for use on medical marijuana in Nevada. Unlike marijuana, hemp can be certified as organically grown. Organic certification does not mean no pesticides were used to produce the crop, but it was grown under strict guidelines established by USDA. Growers wishing to produce products as organic must be certified by USDA, state agencies, or private entities that are authorized to do so. I would recommend taking a photograph of this slide with your cell phone. These are links to some of the more popular sites where you can find and review pesticide labels. The first address is the US EPA website and only contains labels of primary registrants products. In some instances, primary registrants will license other companies known as subregistrants to produce their products. For these sub-registrants, you should go to the company's webpage directly to look at their labels. The second link is to the National Pesticide Information Center. Not only can you find links to label information, but you can also find fact sheets on most of the pesticide active ingredients. Toxicologists are also available and on call to answer questions about pesticide risk. CDMS or Crop Data Management System has product labels available, mostly agricultural products for you to review. Agrian has a web page as does NPIRS, also known as the National Pesticide Information Retrieval Service. This list is not complete. Many states have their own pesticide label database or a link directly to one or more of these web addresses listed on the slide. In the state of Nevada, a pesticide applicator can obtain information about the legal use of pesticide in grow facilities by visiting the department's website at www.agri.nv.us. This fact sheet can be found on the Environmental Services webpage and gives an overview of Nevada requirements, especially how they apply to pesticide licensed for hire applicators who may want to apply pesticides for hire in marijuana cultivation facilities. In Nevada, it is somewhat confusing because there are two programs responsible for the regulation of pesticide application. For cultivation facilities, which will be applying their own pesticide products, these individuals should get a certification, which was described earlier in the presentation. The other program that the Nevada Department of Agriculture is responsible for is the Pest Control Licensing for Hire program. Persons who work for professional pest control companies must fulfill different requirements. This slide shows you how the different credentials look for both programs. Certified applicators receive a blue credential with no photograph if they pass the department's competency exam. Applicator licensing includes the pest control operator's photograph. There are a few licensed pest control companies in Nevada that have the proper agricultural pest control categories to legally apply pesticides for hire in legal marijuana grow facilities. If you are a licensed for hire pest control company in the state of Nevada and you are interested in adding the proper agricultural category to your existing license, there are three ways to do this besides having two years experience as a primary principal. If a primary principal can obtain six months experience, then nine continuing education credits in an agricultural training program will meet the requirement. 
If no experience is available, then 40 credits in an agricultural category would be needed. If a primary principal has three college credits in an agricultural field or related classwork, then nine CEUs would be required to add the agricultural category to your license. This concludes my presentation. You will now be required to complete a 10 question exam to demonstrate your knowledge of the subject matter. I wish you luck and hope to speak with you again in another training module.